Isaiah 58. I hope you can hear me. No. If you have no business at the back. Isaiah chapter 58. Now, Isaiah 58 is where our vision as a church is. Cry aloud, stand and lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression is Jacob. It talks about certain blessings that we get for taking care of the poor, needy, and cold. But I'm asking God a question. This done that led me to have a vision. And in the vision, I had a meeting with Pastor Chris and uh, Snatch and uh, Benny. And he says something to me which I want to just open a bit to. Now let's look at from verse number 8 and 9. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Okay, let's look at from verse 6 for you to understand this thing very well. But I'm talking about righteous bargaining. Righteous bargaining. So he said, is this not a fast I have chosen? This is the, the real fasting you must do. To lose the bounds of wickedness, to undo the heavy bodies, to let the oppressed go free. You break every yoke. And then the next one. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? Good. And that you bring your, to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Now verse 8 is where I was looking at. We are looking at 8 and 9. Then your light, now if you do this, then your, this is the result. Your light will shine on the noon day. So my question was like, why would people do this and not still break through? That's the question. And Sunday I was saying that if God wants to do things, we ask you a question. And personally also, I like asking God questions. And when I meet great people, whether in physical or in dream, I ask questions. Because it's in questions that you get to know what is in the heart of people. I'd, Sometimes people will meet you and talk to you. That's one thing. But they talk to you what they want to talk to you. But when you ask questions, then they tell you what you want to hear. You understand me? So it's like, then your light will break forth like the morning. Number two, your healing shall spring forth speedily. In other words, it didn't say that. Um, this one said your healing. Can I have original um, King James? God. I like the original because there's a difference between healing and health. And your health shall speak forth speedily. In other words, in case you fall sick, <laughs> you'll be so healed that you begin, you'll be healthy. And it will not delay. You understand me? So your health will speak forth speedily. Note the next word. And there's a semicolon, or there's a column, not semicolon there. And thy righteousness shall go before you. Wait a minute. At this straight, he's personalizing the word righteousness. Thine righteousness shall go before you, and then what? The glory of the Lord shall be your reward. So he's saying that, you see, if you look at the first part and the second part, they are like, as you do this, this is the reason why this thing is happening. So the first verse, my service spoke about what you did. Now, verse 8, the first part talks about what you get, and the next after the column tells you what you did, what it brought you. Please, are you understanding me? So he said that, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. In other words, because this righteousness is going before you, you shall be rewarded. Re-rewarded. Now, there's a difference between reward and being re-rewarded. In other words, you could have received a reward, but it can be re-rewarded. I don't want to understand me. You have been paid your salary, but it can be repaid again because there is something that you've done. And as long as you have done an investment, as long as it is yielding, <laughs> nothing stops you from still receiving your royalties or whatever. Then look at verse 9. Ah, then thou shalt call, and the Lord will answer. You called God, I need help. And God answers you. Then the next one, he said, you shall cry, 
and you say, here I am. In other words, when you cry, tears come in your eyes. He doesn't just answer you. He appears physically and says, I am here. <laughs> now, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and they put it for the finger, and speak in vanity. Now, let me leave it there for now. So, I want to talk about what I call righteous bargain, where he said, and your righteousness will go before you. Now, one of the things that is happening in our generation is, let's go to Romans chapter 4, another reading of scripture. We, when you become born again, you don't have righteousness of your own, right? And because you don't have righteousness of your own, you, you believe God, and righteousness is imputed to you. So righteousness is a gift of God. Now, I have a full book, about 600 pages, being worked on, on righteousness, which is coming up. Now, I'm sure I have to add this one to that book. Now, <laughs> if you look at this thing carefully, you look at it, a lot of us, since we became born again, we hang on to something called the righteousness of God. Now, in other words, I'm not perfect. But because I believe God, God has perfected me, right? Or is it true? It's not true. Good. So let's look at what made Abraham, the father of faith, become righteous. This is Romans chapter 4. We can understand the story very well in Genesis 15, but don't go there. Just, just, just deal with you. For with what's here the script? Now give me from verse 1 so that we can understand it. What shall we say then? Abraham, our father, has pertained the flesh, have found to. But if Abraham was justified by works, he have well for the glory, but not before God. So wait a minute. Abraham was not justified by works. Because if it was works, then Abraham should not be a father of, of faith. Because this is the guy who slept with his maid. When the wife said, go, he should have said, God is not of God, so I won't go. This is the guy who said, my wife is my sister. And even though he said, listen to the funny story, even though he said, my wife is my sister, and Abimelech the king wanted to go and sleep with her, God went in and punished the king and his whole household to become impotent. And when they consulted their gods, their gods told them that that lady in your bosom is somebody's wife. And when they consulted, God said, that's the first time you hear the word prophet in the Bible, that Abraham is my prophet. Now, wait a minute. Somebody who just lied, God, you are destroying people because <laughs> of what? Because he's your prophet. Now, this is what we mean, Abraham believed God. But look at it. For if Abraham were justified by works, he wherefore, he had wherefore to glory, but not before God. In other words, to God, he was not righteous. <laughs> but to man, he became righteous. How? Because the next verse is going to help us. Verse 3. If I understand. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. So how do you get righteous? You become righteous because you believe that Christ died for you. Christ has paid a penalty of your sin. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. So the devil can't use it against you. No distance. The devil can't use it against you. No distance. The devil can't use it against you and God will be in support of you. But there's one factor we left out. We are not dealing with both God and demons. We're also dealing with human beings. I'll get it. So just imagine that you know me to be a thief, right? Or you know me to be a bad person. Yes, I went to God. God has forgiven me, right? Satan can attack me. But you, the physical person that know me to be, there are certain opportunities you will not give me. Oh, it's, it's not true. Oh, is is it true? It's not true. So you know, you know, you know the funny thing. So we relate it like God has forgiven me, no problem. The devil can have access, but we are dealing with more than God and the devil here. Now let's move on because for what let's read together three and then we move to four. Then I can begin to get into my story. For what have the scriptures? Eh? Let's read together. Go. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God. It was accounted unto him for righteousness. Four. Now to him that worketh is the what? Reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. So in other words, if you give me NLT for this, if you work on righteousness, you owe God in advance. 
because then he gives you grace. But how many of us want to walk in favor? <laughs> favor. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. So wait a minute. If Abraham never worked for righteousness, are you with me? God gave it to him because he believed. Yes, he believed. God has given it to him. He's righteous before God. He will make it to heaven. His sins are forgiven. But there are certain factors that will fight Abraham for life. So if you look at Jesus when he came on earth, Luke chapter 2, verse 52, he did something, and you want to understand this one very well, get my book, Paris Protocol. You realize that Jesus increased in stature, in wisdom, in favor with God, and in favor with men. So there are two types of favor. Favor with God and favor with men. Now, God can favor you, but that doesn't mean that man will favor you. <laughs> well, the new book will give you more about it. What is the new book? Destiny, right? Why I told you that God chose, um, what is the name? David. And Samuel said he won't go. Because God chose Paul in Acts chapter 9, and Ananias nearly did not go. If not for a particular dream that Peter had, Cornelius would never have seen Peter's face. And I told you how Elijah had a word for over 20 years to go and anoint Jehu, and never did. Elisha himself never did. So he sent just a servant to go and pour the oil. And the guy was a captain of an army when he should have been the head of the nation. Because somebody decided not to relay a certain information to him. So you can now understand this thing that if you get approval from God, it is okay. It's a spiritual realm. In the social realm, you can dream. You are buying houses. You are buying cars. You are enjoying life. But physically, you are suffering because there is something we call a righteous bargain, which that one God will not give you, you must build. You see, people say things like, I don't care what people think about me. It is true. You might not care what people think about you. What people think about you could be the reason why you are where you are. Should I move on? So, Luke 252, can I have a scripture? Because it's something I want us to, yeah. Jesus, the word increase. So the word increase means that there are levels. He increased in what? Wisdom and stature and in favor with God and in favor with men. If I want to have favor with God, I also want to have favor with men. Because read your Bible. Anytime you see the word favor, especially in Esther chapter 2, where in the book of Esther, where favor is very paramount, see that favor goes with sight. If I found favor in your sight, if I found favor in your... So favor has got to do with how people see you. Favor is physical. Can you give me a scripture, Luke chapter 2? I'm sorry, Esther chapter 2, which will give us more. Of that. If it, so favor is by sight. So you can, you can see two people pass, all of a sudden you just want to talk to one, you want to leave one. You say that person has found favor. It can be the body, it can be the hairstyle, it can be the perfume, it can be. But favor has always got to do with the senses. Favor is not to do with the spirit. How I see you, how I perceive you. Am I talking to somebody here at all? And, okay, the king loved Esther more than, give me from verse 15, please. There's, there's, there are two kinds of favor in them. When, when the time for Esther, the, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as the daughter, go to the king, she requested nothing but that which would And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. Esther obtained what? In the sight of all who saw her. Now, why did Esther obtain favor? Esther obtained favor because he dressed the way the king wanted him to. And because the king wanted him to, and everybody there was a subject to the king, everybody became attracted to Esther because of his models of dressing. So all the people, Esther found favor in the hour. Now he was going to now find favor in the sight of the Abolo, the king. Now, 
If Esther had not found favor in the sight of um, um, Haggai, Haggai would not have taught Esther the dress code. And Esther would not have found favor with the king. She was beautiful. That is righteousness. She was naturally beautiful, but for her to enter into the palace and meet the king, she needed to put on a certain kind of dress code. And that one, nobody could force her. It was her own choice. Because what she wore was going to determine who she obtained favor from. Please, is somebody understanding me here? Good, are you, are you understanding me here? Now, the kind of cologne or perfume she was, or who you put on, will determine there are some things you put on yourself. People naturally move away from you. Oh, am I, am I here? I've got somewhere. One day, um, somebody, people came to church, and they were telling me that they work with false prophets before. And I said, oh, I said, okay. Oh. And he said, they, they, if they see false prophet, they see one. I said, okay. I said, how? He said, all of them have a particular perfume. They, all, they have some particular perfume they use if you smell them. So one day, um, somebody dashed a perfume. And me too, I like the scent, so I sprayed it. The people stopped coming to church. So one day, I was chatting with this. I don't see you. I said, Pastor, it looks like you have joined them. I said, how? <laughs> I said, last one I came, you were smelling like them. I, I said, I, I don't understand. I said, the perfume you are using, is it this color? Is it this brand? I said, yes. And that's why they all take it to the place they pray for. I said, me and my own, it wasn't like that. I mean, somebody brought it, but still they never came back to church. Now, believe you me, genuinely, it is just perfume. But because somebody, oh no, no, I call you him, when he hears the scent, it's like somebody who has been to, so, so, sorry, why can I mention you for? They know all the candle scents, the incense. As soon as they enter, they smell one, you know, ah, this is one of the place. <laughs> or is it true or is it not true? Yeah. Like the ladies, they know all kinds of permit for her. They can smell it all. Some ladies are so smart, if you hug another lady, they will know this perfume. <laughs> is this person's perfume? Uh, it's true, it's not true. So favor is by the what? The senses. And if favor is by the senses, then you should understand that, yes, God can approve you, but maybe it will take longer for man to approve you because of how you are making man perceive you. Am I talking to somebody here? Or you are not here at all? So look at somebody say, do you have favor? What did the person say? So let's look at some few spots of scriptures. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 62, 1, 2, 3. May God give you favor. Amen. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as what? Right? And her salvation as a lamb that bends. Hold on. So. Two things you are seeing here is righteousness and salvation. Now, you are seeing here in verse that God says, for Zion's sake, the word is Zion is a church. For the sake of the body of Christ, I will never sleep. For the sake of you breaking through, I will never sleep. I will never give up because I want to see you succeed. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Why? Jerusalem will symbolize the chosen people of God. I will never rest. I will until her righteousness goes forth as brightness. In other words, righteousness can decide not to go forth as brightness. Let's not forget that Isaiah 58 scripture said, and your righteousness shall go before you. It didn't say God's righteousness. It said your righteousness. So there is God's righteousness and there is your righteousness. And this word righteousness is talking about, can I go deeper? Your honesty, your integrity, your personal lifestyle. Here you are quiet. <laughs> he said, Your righteousness must go before you. That's just the one. But he said that God, so to God, no matter how righteous you are, he's still not at rest until that righteousness. It's like what? Go forth and begin to brighten. 
And that righteousness makes somebody better. And that righteousness is the reason why somebody is serving God. And that righteousness is because of that, before somebody wants to pray. Now, then the question you ask is, what to make somebody see? What kind of thing will someone? Because I thought righteousness cannot be seen. It is a gift of God. And because it's a gift of God, it cannot be seen. Do you know that if somebody comes here right now and said, I, I jumped here 20 times, and I jumped here 40 times, and I became a millionaire, everybody would do the same. Is it true? It's not true. You also want to, I go and ask the person, when you jump, was your hand up or was in your pocket? Media team, can we see the video of how he jumped? Why? Because people want to make sure that if that thing made somebody succeed, then let me also make it succeed. Now, Abraham believed God, and it was accredited to him for righteousness. He became the father of faith, he became a millionaire, he became rich, he became successful. Now, the question I want to ask you is that, where has the righteousness you have taken you? Is it most likely that God is also not resting because he wants your righteousness to be bright and that your salvation is a lamb that burns? In other words, your salvation, I'm saved. That when you are saved, God wants you to be like the lamp or a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Yes, you are saved, but do you become a light in your corner? At your office, at your workplace, in your area, in your neighborhood, among your friends, how is that light shining? Actually, most people don't even know you have light. Now, if there's light off in everybody's house and you are the only one that has light, you know you are in trouble. Is it true or is it not true? What do you think your neighbors will do to you? Everybody will charge the, and people will bring their extension cord. <laughs> That's where you can see that people can make long cords. <laughs> is it true or is it not true? People will bring 100 meter cord <laughs> and connect to and you know, everybody will want to be your friend. Or is it true or is it not true? Everybody wants to talk to you. Why? Because you have light. Now, the question is that why is it that you don't attract such at a work site among your neighborhood? Is it because you don't have light, but you talk as if you have light? Is it because you are saved, but your salvation is not burning? There's a guy who, around 2010, 2011, I met. The first name, I still have it on my phone. He tells me to delete it, but I don't know. It can't be deleted. The first thing I called him was suspicious. That's the name I gave him. One piece of miracle, he came. Currently, the whole of Action Chapel, the whole of Action Chapel, is in charge of their security. <laughs> now, here it is. He was a stunned Muslim. And we always had confrontation, me and him. Whilst I was telling what should be done, he was always talking about, let's kill a cow. <laughs> let's go to the north and do this. Let's go and do that. And I told him that, look, you become born again. You do God's will. He swore it will never be. Allah, he swore. I mean, this is a guy who can be doing meeting and you stop the meeting and go and pray. His forehead was dark. So you should know that's a stand Muslim. Today, he's a pastor. Now, wait a minute. If you ask him, one day I met him, he said I was working with someone, I forgot who. He looked at him and he said, this your man is not a pastor. I and mean, any time he meets people, he tells them that me, I'm not a pastor because of the way I do things. Now, if he says I'm not a pastor, not because I am bad, but because of my level of knowledge and appreciation in almost every area of life. I'm a kind of light. Because, you see, most people assume that when you are a Christian, you are a dolu. You didn't hear me. <laughs> you are, you are saying, oh, you're a brave Frank. <laughs> or is it true? It's not true. Like if you're a Christian, somebody you sits in trouble, you're, you're, you give 200 Ghana, your, your balance is led. So, please, can I keep it? Uh, and because girls are sitting left and right, <laughs> no brave. <bra. laughs> <laughs> not, not me. <laughs> not me. 
The worst I would do to that is I tell the ladies, the ladies, take their money and take. <laughs> then I know that at least the ladies benefited because I'm shy. But pass, I'll leave the money for you, forget. <laughs> How many are, are, are here with me? Now, people have a mentality is that, oh, if we're a Christian, you, you don't know your left from your right. She said, no, the Bible is saying that your salvation must be what? Your salvation as a lamb that bends. Your salvation must be a lamb that what? Now, it means that you can be saved and the lamp of your salvation doesn't bend. Now, when the lamp of your salvation doesn't bend, it means that the lamp lacks oil. Oh, this, you say, Pastor, I don't understand. The Bible says there were 10 virgins. Don't take us there, Matthew 25. But the Bible ended up classifying some as foolish and wise. Because with the foolish, when the season for them to brighten came, they ran out of oil. Is it true? And because they ran out of oil, what happened? They missed the opportunity. By the time they came for oil, for the alarm to burn, the door was closed. And they knocked and knocked, and they said, they are, no, they can't open to you because the door is closed. He said, most likely, when you need light most, you don't have it. You only have light when you don't need it. Do you know that people can be good for God until they are very close to the opportunity, then they mess up. When the opportunity closes, then they go back living well for God. Is it true? It's not true. And I'll prove it to you in the Bible. So give me NLC for this. So look at somebody say, I must brighten and I must bend. So let's read this version, girl. Because I love Zion, I will not keep still. Because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I cannot remain silent. I will not stop praying for her until her righteousness shines like the dawn and her salvation blazes like a burning torch. Now, this is more like a pastor also being told that, listen, don't give up on the souls until these two things happen. Their righteousness shines like the dawn. No one is done when the sun appears in the morning. How many of you have seen the sun appear in the morning before? You wonder where the darkness went to. Is it like there's so much darkness around you because your righteousness is not shining? Most Christians don't have personal integrity. Personal honesty. Personal trust. Everything is as God. But it's not everybody who can ask God. Your boss can ask God. <laughs> your boyfriend can ask God. Your girlfriend can ask God. Your husband can ask God. Your, are, you, are you understanding me? The, the, I, I think I'm not preaching here. <laughs> Even God knows I'm righteous. It's true. But you see, I want to I always do this. You, let's all say we are serving God. I don't think you are okay if you are serving God for a long time and I'm not seeing progress. I feel there's something wrong. Please, are you here with me? If you have a car, your battery is brand new. Starter is working. Fuel is inside. And the car will not spark. Please, will you sleep? Because you know that there's a, this car has got to work. It is not working. Is it not working because your lamp is dimmed? Your fuel, you don't have fuel. Are you now a foolish virgin? Okay, foolish virgin. I'm not a virgin, so let me put it in context. <laughs> foolish holiness. <laughs> yeah, there's holiness, which is foolishness. They were, they were all holy. But 50% of that level of holiness, they are called foolishness. Because holiness, that doesn't shine. <laughs> it's foolishness. It's called misfraction. Petrol is good, but when petrol is mixed with water, it's no more useful for car. 
That petrol cannot be used again for the purpose of starting a car. Is it true? It's not true. So living a dual kind of life can also diminish your lamp from brightening. Do you know that there can be a person in your neighborhood who everybody knows is a thief? When things get lost, everybody will go to Abraham Pacho. My point here. Why oh Debbie? No. Please. I just have twenty CDs. If you can help me find it, I'll give it to you. So, uh, three o'clock, let's talk. You know that he can get that good for you. You too. Your righteousness. What do people know about your righteousness that they can call you? Even when somebody is sick in your neighborhood, they will not even call you. When he hears somebody, oh God, oh save me, save me. Holy Ghost said, get up and go and pray. Say, oh, nobody must know I'm a believer. Why are you hiding your believing grace? Because you know very well that in the morning they will say, hey, so you were able to heal and look at your character. And because you don't want them to say anything, you must still stay in your corner. But what happened to the song? Brighten the corner where you are. So look at them and say, is your corner brighten? How can we all walk in darkness? You have torch light and you have put your torch light up. Because the truth is that in the new book, I hope you are reading the book. How many of you still don't have a copy? Try and get one. Try and get one. Hear me. In, in the new book, I said, one of the chapters, I don't know what is chapter three, men are God's vehicles. Men are who? Who, who are God's vehicles? Men. So if God wants to give you one million, who will he use? Men. A car? Men. A house? Men. You can't marry angels. You marry a man. You, can, you marry a woman. So men are God's vehicles. And can I tell you something? First, someone 16, the Bible says, Man, God looks at the heart. Man looks at what? Mm -hmm. Outward. So how men see you determines your favor. But it's not true. How men perceive you. Sometimes it is not true, but it's a wrong perception. Do you, know, do, you know, do you know why they didn't call David to the ordination service to be made a king? Because of how they perceived his background was. His background was the mother was a prostitute. And some of you heard me. On, um, um, if you go to YouTube, you see my, my message in bed in hell. Bed in hell. Yeah, you see that message, bed in hell. I explained it. So why should he come to the ceremony? Am I talking to somebody here at all? Am I talking to somebody here at all? So look at somebody and say, is your touch light working? So read what's on the screen, everybody go. Because I love Zion, I will not keep still. Because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I cannot remain silent. So the intercessor is saying this, God is saying that I can't remain silent. Until, until, until. I will not stop praying for her until. So that means that until certain things are being seen, you can't just stop praying for yourself and for people. Until certain things become very evident, you can't just leave it there. said, until her righteousness, not that you don't have it. But that righteousness has to shine. Amen? Amen? On her righteousness, that's what? Shines like the dawn, and her salvation blazes like a burning torch. Not just a torch, a burning torch. Now, let me give you verse 2. There is what? Nations will what? Will see your... So wait a minute. It's not God. America will see it. 
UK will see it. China will see it. Europe will see it. Nations will see your what? I'm saved. Yeah, my heart is saved. If you like open my heart, you know that I'm going to heaven. Yeah, I know. Your heart is right. Are you confused so far? Is it a good teaching so far? I know, but I know. <laughs> God, I want the nations to look for me. I was telling you I had an encounter with Benny Hinn and who Pastor Chris and Sinat. Why do nations look for certain people and nations don't look for certain people? And guess what? Whilst we were having the meetings, and people around me were sleeping. <laughs> that, now, why is it that people are taking over nations? I'm praying to God, God, I want the nations. And God is saying, you want it, you want this thing. World, world leaders, you want those things. There should be something that people have to see. You can be a good, let me remind you, you can be a good mechanic at your workshop. Nobody will come to your place and repair a good car until you advertise what you have in your workshop. Is it true or is it not true? You can have the answers to the world. Nobody will come for it until the, what, you advertise what you have. I've always said this, and this off, off it, but let me say, I always say that our media team, all they know how to do is what? Is it what? No. You advertise. You don't invite. There's a difference between advertisement and invitation. Advertisement is telling people what you have. Invitation is telling them why they need it. <laughs> so, take your seat. I'm a good man. If you marry me, you are blessed. Okay, then I'll consider you. But I'm a good man. There's so many good men. <laughs> oh, am, I, am, I, am, am, am I teaching you? I'm a beautiful lady. Wait, that's good. You are beautiful. But there are so many beautiful men that are my water. When you cook, we crack stones. Okay, you want a job? Good. What are you bringing to the table? I'm a good worker. What are you bringing to the table? Ask my former boss. What are you bringing to the table? Just check my CV. Well, next. What are you bringing to the table? I want to see this company go to this level in the next two, three years. The last company I joined, when I went, they were at this level. Within one year, they went to this level. But I'm not having enough competition. I know that this place will give me space to expand so that I can be able to even, if possible, become, uh, I'm not getting the word for it, become um, a shareholder in the company. Because I want us to open up and get big shares. So, master, why, why do I say, please? <laughs> what? what, what? I'm not sure you are here with me. I'm not sure you understand me. Yes, was the other person capable? Yes, he was capable. But what is the problem? He was just advertising. Who, who needs your advert? So sometimes unbelievers get more people in their church. Hey, if you come, if your head is even cut off, it will be falling back on it. Au revoir. If you are mad, if you come, so somebody's head is cutting off. Mad is coming. Well, if you want a child, I do this, you get pregnant. People, so people are rushing. Why? What are they saying? You get there, there is nothing to offer. But I know something where we go, we are anointed. We have power. Our praises is good. There's a word in the church. Thank you, but we don't need that. Do you know that everybody's hair, I'm a hairdresser, that I did, won the fashion show. Wait a minute. Do you know how many people come to you? Is it true? It's not true. Yeah. I'm the one that babs all the celebrity footballers, their hair. 
Wait a minute. That's why you charge high. Why is the same haircut? May your righteousness go before you. Amen. The reason why you are not being embraced is that the righteousness is in your pocket. <laughs> it is still between you and God. And you don't care what man thinks. And sometimes by the time God intervenes on your behalf, you are too old. You are not here at all. So let's go to Genesis chapter 30 from verse 30. This is a man by name Jacob who has wasted 20, no, 40 years of his life. If we're in the palace, I'll seize your phone. Let me come. Can I come here? Is Reverend Victor around? Okay. This is Jacob. He decided to go and get married. Hmm? When he was going, his brother chased him, so he lost the diary. So he goes to his uncle, and the uncle said, okay, the last time your grandfather, your father was here, Isaac and they sent Eliezer, they came with goose. So that same day, they took Rebecca. But you, since you came with nothing, you two are, you can't go back. You must work and pay. The guy said, oh, no problem. After all, I've seen this lady. She's very beautiful. So I'll work and pay. So they agreed that he work for seven years. Right. When he worked for seven years, the man suddenly realized that if I let this person go, there's something he has. My business will go down. So let me do this. Let me use technicalities to delay him. So we all know the story. Rahel was swapped, and they gave Leah. When they gave Leah, Jacob only finished enjoying himself. Then he woke up in the morning to realize that he married the wrong person. This has happened to so many men <coughs> who only recognize what they had sex with after they have had a covenant. And now you break, you can't break away. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? So he had to now work another seven years. Ha! It's not easy to get another woman. And the Bible said, because he loved this woman, the seven years looked like this. Now, you know something? When you want to work very hard, you must love what you do. If you don't love what you do, what you do will be tiredness, trouble, and weariness. I love what I do, so it never worries me. I love. Many people get tired because what they do, they don't love. Watch the footballers. Their legs are wounded. They still say they want to play. Coach says that they get angry. Some of you, if you play football and somebody slap you, want that to be the end. Like me, who went to join Cadet, I was telling you Sunday. And Cadet, I made a mistake. They slapped me. I slapped her. Papa, wah, wah. I said, Take your Cadet. Because of Cadet, you slapped me. I said, Jai, Take your Cadet. I don't want anything to do with soldier. I'm sure, Fafa, you remained there. You got a lot of slaps and you paid people back. Me, me like this, you like this, you slap me. Because what? Because you are boss. Take your seat like you regret. <laughs> are you a, that is why I never became, but the only thing I did was that I took their uniform, took pictures with it took their gun, everything. So if I show you the picture, you think I was a cadet. <laughs> so the, the truth, a lot of people have things to show they are, but the truth is that they are not. They don't have the character inside them to be. Jacob worked so hard that the seven years became like this. And within a short time, he had married two wives. By mistake. <laughs> don't say, I will learn from that. <laughs> 
Then, when he finished, he went to his mother and said, I came here to serve, so I'm going. And his uncle said, for where? Now, he doesn't have anything to hold him on. He's married. He has children. Then the man says something. Can I have New King James? For it was little which, for what you, for what you had before I came was little. This is Laban talking. No. Let's no go up. Give me from twenty nine. Let's see or twenty eight. So Jacob said to him, "You know where I have, you know, I have saved you, and how your livestock has been with me." See, he's talking about. When I, you gave me 100 goats, 20 sheep, 100 cows, fowls, 200, you know how they have been with me. I'm leaving, but I'm giving you account. The next one. For what you had before I came was little. When I came, this business, the returns was only 20,000 Ghana a year. We are in 200,000. I'm teaching you what is called righteousness in the physical eye. It is not spiritual. It must be written. It can be seen. When I joined the church, the church was only 20. Now we are in 20,000. And it was increased. It has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming. Wait a minute. This is righteousness. Now, I just showed you that he said, the Gentiles, the nations will see your light. He said that the Lord has blessed me since you are coming. Now, can this thing be said about the everyday believer today? That somebody will say that because of you, that's why it can be bold enough to say that since I became your friend. Let me tell you, dear son, if we become your friends, things will go well. Then I believe if they become your friends, things will go bad. I was talking to my foreman recently. Ah, these days they don't come to work. These days they don't come to work. So I called him and said, Master, what's the problem? He said, So why why do you leave you? I said, Why? You know, when they started working, all of them started making money. And when they started making money, some of them started their own businesses. He bought cars and his family people wanted to finish him. So he told them that I bought a car for him so that they won't trouble him. So I asked him, how did he get the knowledge? He says he read one of my books, he got that knowledge. Then he said, I don't understand. Anytime you give me money, I make money. I said, because my money, I don't steal. I don't prophesy wrongly and take money. So my money is not cursed. So whenever I give you the money, you succeed. There's Efo Kujo, the man just opposite the church, the brother. He also said the same thing. You can go and ask him. Now, meanwhile, they are saying, if they give you their money, as soon as their money touches your money, your money is bankrupt. Please, are, are, you, are you getting where I'm coming from? Which I'm talking to you about my righteousness. <laughs> please, are, are you getting me? So, that, recently, a lady sent me a message that, Daddy, please, I want you to add me to the WhatsApp group and so that I can have a message. I told her, I think, I'm going to I don't do it. I remember this lady, the husband has worked in Echo Bank for all his life. But I don't know I remember, they were sitting here. And they have followed me from Malam, from, no, I slammed down. And the man's building was uncomplete. I saw that you are about to remove them. He said, nobody, he doesn't see what. I took $100 and I gave to the man. In less than six months, they finished building their house and they left. They never came to say thank you. Never came to a church. We found our WhatsApp group. They moved to us in less than six months. I mean, I taught people give to pastor, but I gave. None of you are there. I call and I give. I do, I do that for people. When someone I realize that your doors are locked and they say things like nobody shall give you money. Because anything anybody wants to give you money, there's a spirit that will say, I'll kill you. So me, I'll give you the money and say, come and kill me. I'm just giving an example. Where was I? <laughs> I'm talking still about what? Your righteousness going before you. 
Now, this is Jacob. He's saying that since I join you, there's expansion everywhere. Things are moving on. Life is okay. Now, the question is you. Since you join, praise the Lord. <laughs> you see, you can play holy, but the fundamentals will expose you. You can play with the inflation, but the dollar is. <laughs> Please, are you, are you understanding me here? You can be a back of bush, you can be a back of bush. You see, you see, me, I'm serving God, though. But God knows my heart. It's oh God, the reason why things are not working. It's not true. There is something fundamentally wrong. Because there is no way I, I've been young, listen, and I'm old. I have never seen the righteous, number one, forsaken, or his children begging for bread. It is impossible. I don't know what you do in private, but I know your results. And your results tells me a lot of things. One day, forgive me, I was looking at Pastor Tony and where Pastor Tony, you know Pastor Tony is big. When we are fasting, Pastor Tony is going fat. So one day I carry Pastor Tony to a hospital for checkup. Me. When I went, he was more healthier than me. He said, ah, your body is strong and heavy. They say he's healthier than me. That's the day I humbled myself because don't let people's body deceive you. Some people look good, but they can die tomorrow morning. Oh yes, everything look okay. That's what that's the real water shock. You see, some they never die. <laughs> Reverend is not rest, never said that he doesn't know why drunkards don't die in the village. But the rich are always dying. Have you seen that thing? The drunkards and those people who who are normal people, they don't die. Because you can do the pawns. You can pretend. But someone tell you about your internal or your external. When you are not feeling well, master, it's not external. It is. One can say, oh, I'm not feeling well. I don't even know what I'm talking about. You know, sir, on the account, which means I'm not poor, I'm not poor. So. The Lord has blessed you since my come, and now when shall I also provide for my own house? That's the serious question. Let you know, I have two wives. I have sons, I have daughters. My Barbara, all my labor for 14 years, you labor is for you to make more money. My, grand, my, my father came here, paid diary, and left. I've paid double diary. When will I also make it in life? Now, some of you, if you tell your boss this thing, that's the day you are fired. Because you, they, since you came, it's only give me today hospital, tomorrow antenna, tomorrow that. And you understand me? You're giving birth six times since you joined the company. And each of the times you go and leave. <laughs> Every two years, you go on leave nine months. So out of the six years, you go on leave three years with salary. I think I'm not preaching well. Oh, are you here you going somewhere else? And when you are just pregnant, <laughs> you get a doctor's report. I have a friend, when you meet him, lawyer is uncommon. He showed me some, I said, I'll do some. He took me to his chambers years ago. You know what he has done? He has a gym and a kindergarten for nursing babies. I said, why? So 
when you give birth, you come to work. And then you still work, and he has gotten a nurse in the, hosp in the work site. When your baby cries, you come and breastfeed. When you finish, you go back to work. I said, I quit. <laughs> I said, that's a nice one. So you give birth, no problem. Even the day of delivery can be at work. There's a place that they can handle you. But that's, let's move on. Now, when shall I provide for my house? Now, there's a genuine question which I think the same thing happened when Peter asked in Mark chapter 10 that we have followed you. We have followed you. We gave up land, house, mother, father. What shall we get? Now, you realize that in the case of Peter also, they were specific to name the things they have sacrificed. I lost the land. I lost a mother. I lost a father. Can you take me there? Mark chapter 10, I think from verse 28. I lost this, I lost that, I lost that. These days, people serve God, they lose nothing. Oh, jai, 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 jai. They lose nothing. Oh, yeah, sure, oh, yeah. So they are serving, they are serving in church. One leg is inside, one leg is outside. In case pastor fires me, I know what to do. Now, because, see, we have left all and followed you, 29. Then Peter said, oh, give me 29, please. You therefore, oh, God. Then if you go home and read it, it's there. I don't need to have it again. I don't have time. So he said, I said to the, um, Jesus and said, nobody who have left what, look at the things they left. They lost house, then brothers and what? Father, mother, wife, children, lands, for my sake and the gospel, shall receive a hundredfold return. So, going back to the New Test Old Testament, we saw that Jacob was also saying that since I joined, this has been my input. And this, if this has been my input, what prevents me from having an output? So, let's go back to the scripture. Oh, quickly, 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 quickly. Back to Genesis 30. Jacob said, you have known, I have served you. Okay, 30. Who is in the studio? You had little, when I came by, your world has increased enormously. The Lord has blessed me through everything I've done, but now what about me? What, when can I start providing for my own family? Now look at verse 31. So he said, what, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, you shall give me anything if you will do this for me. I will, I will again feed and keep your flock. Now give me New King James. Okay, let's read it. Go. So he said, what shall I give you? This is Laban. And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything if you will do this thing for me. I will again feed and keep your flock. You see, he's saying... He, he's going to bargain, but he was smart to say that don't decide what to give me. <laughs> because he, he's dealing with a smart labor. So don't decide what you give me. I want to decide. And if you will give me this, I'll still stay and do my duties. Now, wait a minute. Who can do this? Because if you say, I'm going to name my salary. It's likely they will sack you. Is it true or is it not true? So it means that he, he has to have something which he himself will name later, which would change the mindset of Laban. He was telling Laban that if you give me what I want, I will still keep your flock. Okay, let's do it in church. I will still keep the department. I'll still do this. No, the Bible said, what sort of are your hands find to do? Do it with all your mind. Because there's no what device or anything in the grave. You know what happens to most of us? When we get to things that we are doing, we don't do it well. So because we don't do it well, 
The Bible said that when servants serve your masters as you have served God or Christ, knowing that he will reward you. So God knows your heart. But again, does your boss, does your leader, does the association know your heart? Your heart is, the reality of your heart is the result you are giving. What am I saying? The reality of your heart is the what? The reality of your heart is the what? Yeah, it's the result. That's the reality. Not what you think. So let's move on. Verse 32. Let me pass through all your flock today. Removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep. And all the brown ones among the lambs. And the spotted and speckled among the goats. This shall be my wages. Don't change it. What he's saying is that let's go through the the this thing, the flocks. If we see any goat who is white, I won't take. Black, I won't take. Brown, I won't take. But if it's black and white, brown and white, blue, black. Like if I see private car, I won't take taxi. Taxi, BI media. Now let me ask you a question. Taxis and private cars, which one are more in town? Huh? Private. Oh, taxis are here in Oku. <laughs> you can have a full house of people, not even one commercial car. <laughs> now, when Laban said speckled, sorry, Jacob said speckled, Laban looked through and saw that, oh, one here, one here. One here, one here. Let me tell you this. The people who take care of things well, they know the reality of things on the ground than the people who stay up and give instructions. <laughs> that, and that is the difference between a leader and a boss. A boss just says, do this, do that, go here, come here. A leader is with you. Now, because Jacob has been on the field, he knows something the boss does. Because when Laban looked at the flock and he saw that they were more one colored than double colored, he said, Oh, it's a good thing. And next thing you are going to know later is that God had given Jacob an idea. Jacob was going to make the white and the brown meet. And if the white and the brown meet, they will have speckle more. So Jacob was going to make sure. The white and white will never meet. Brown and brown will never meet. You are not hearing me. May God give you wisdom. Yes. He didn't just, he was not just taking care of the flock. He, he, knows, he, he knows how the flock has multiplied. He knows the business links. He knows what to do to make the clients come in. Yours is the money, right? That's what most people do. How much money do we get? You are not interested in the clients. Don't even how much money. That was in the Jacob. Jacob was not just working. He knew how things worked. He was not being things on his spirituality. His righteousness was not just spiritual. Now look at Jacob in verse 33. This is where my cast is. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. Hold on. What righteousness is he talking about here? He didn't say God's righteousness. He said, what I'm saying, you will not get it. But my righteousness will speak for me in times coming. One thing is the word righteous here is talking about my integrity, my honesty, my reputation. You know why Jacob could, could trust, um, Laban could trust Jacob? He could trust Jacob because for the past 14 years, the guy has been faithful. And faithfulness is a currency. Destiny, the book on how to what? Book in the title. 
Take charge of a destiny. I mentioned it. Faithfulness is what? Integrity is a what? Loyalty is a what? Yeah, this was what he meant by my righteousness. Laban trusted his righteousness. It wasn't just the fact that he could make things multiply. But Laban was like, I can trust you. My righteousness. Now, who can put his hands and write down what is their righteousness? We have a generation that their righteousness is only from God. God knows my heart. I know your face. Have you eaten gari before? Or have you eaten grano before? And you didn't peel it up. And the grano is on your teeth. And when I ask you, are you fasting? Come be dear demon. Then you are even laughing that your teeth is brown. Then the guy says, can I remove this from you? Hey, so yesterday's food is still in my mouth. <laughs> Then when everybody's praying, when I said this, you put this, I'm doing dry. They don't even, they don't even mellow themselves. They say they are doing dry. No, wait. Oh. How can you? Now sometimes people say they are doing fasting. The whole day they're on their phone. TikToking, Facebooking. Why wouldn't you have a dream that Jamilo wanted to marry you? You are worrying people, you are watching people's breasts and people's part. That's what all your dream. Say me when I finish the fasting, I, it's only spiritual marriage. People want to sleep with me, so how can you fast and you cook? He put the food down, and it's 5.49, and you must set him down by the food. Say, <laughs> 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 Don't worry, you had your answers already. You've had your answers already. God doesn't need to answer you again. You've had your answers already because your expectation has been granted. My righteousness. Now, you see, this righteousness Jacob was talking about, assuming Laban did not know that he had some level of righteousness, Laban would not have allowed him. This kind of righteousness he was talking about was known and felt by the people who were there with him. Are you with me or you are not with me? Or are you here or you are not here? One day we did, we went somewhere and they said, there was some money. They said they should share. And they said, hey, who take this? Who take this? I look at all of them and say that they should share it. I don't need it. No, 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 no. You are a senior. So we'll give, I said, I don't need it. When I left, the people called me. You have really embarrassed us. Why didn't you take anything? So you better fight over things. Big men don't fight over things. Okay. Guess what? They gave me half. <laughs> they gave me what? Half. So imagine they were sharing 10,000. They gave me 5,000. And I went, praise be the Lord. Now you thought I was giving you for free. No. Of course, you know very well, if I don't get anything, I go. The laborer is worthy of his wages. I didn't get anything. You see, the truth is that a lot of us have no righteousness that goes before us. Our righteousness is always internal. And you know, we're up to 
you know my sacrifice for this company. You know my sacrifice for this business. Master, you don't need to say it. It must be seen. It must be felt. It must be known. I, I, is it true or is it not true? <laughs> Am I teaching something here? Jacob had to bargain with his righteousness. He put his integrity at stake. Now, anything you are doing for God, right? I'm not going to say, God, one day I was talking to some people who were saying that, Daddy, talk to God or we must marry. I said, well, I'll talk to God. And they said something that made me angry. He said, see the way we serve God and we are still single. I said, that area, if I take it to God, you will be single forever. When in the night there are four legs on the bed. Four legs. You know what are four legs on the bed? Oh God, I'm single. God knows you are not single. You are too attached. <laughs> I think I'm not preaching here. Am I preaching very well here? Do you know? Do you know people who lost wives to be, husbands to be, because of their commitment to the work of God? Because of their commitment to the work of God, their lover left them. I can give one example in this church, Pastor David. And if such a person is saying, God, Praise the Lord. Amen. Mighty power. What to talk in your mind in a church or relationship? Choose one. Look, as for God, I can serve God anyway. Oh, true or false? Oh, you, are, you are not my name here. <laughs> to down do, I, I won't do prophetic today. So don't mind me. I, I, eh, I intentionally don't. Uh, last week I did, last two weeks I did, so no prophetic today. My own said they were. Yeah. <laughs> God, you know how I've been faithful with my tithe. No, it's not true. If I check the house you have built and the car you drive and your dress, your tithe is not correct. Pastor, you don't know. They are gifts. We thank God. Praise the Lord. And sometimes I see people who go to God and say, I'm like Abraham. I believe God. Lord, I believe you. And because I believe you, let me have the righteousness of Abraham. Wait a minute. Do you know what it means to believe God? When God tells you, pack your things. You and your wife go where I will show you. And your wife you, where are we going? You say, I don't know. Wait a minute. Which lady will follow a man like that today? I don't know. You follow him 45 years. Have you arrived? I don't know. What's the name of this God? I don't know. Where does he come from? I don't know. Today we can say God of Abraham. But at that time, we didn't know his name. So all he knows is that I don't I keep hearing him say. This one that you even know, you don't believe. But let's talk about tithing. Like today, next week they'll pay tithe. Three weeks. Let's talk about holiness. You will live one month, two months. Is it true or is it not true? He said, my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. When the subject of my, my wages comes before you, 
Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs we consider stolen as it is with me. He said, if you come and you find anything that is one color in my pen, I'm a thief. So how do you build this kind of righteousness? How many of you want to build it? Psalm 15. Psalm 15, 1, 5. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? Two. Give me an LT. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness. He works righteousness. You know what? When you want to have in you want to walk in righteousness, be the person that your yes is your yes and your no is your no. If it says something, you do it. Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from their heart sincerely. I always tell people this that if, let me use for an example. If you do something and you come and ask me, I don't tell you the truth. After you put truth, they'll be angry with me. If I don't tell you the truth, and I tell you I lie today, you'll be okay with me. But the day you find out the truth, you will leave and never come back. But if I tell you the truth and you get angry with me, you will go. But the day you find the truth, you will look back for me. So I will tell you the truth because it's the reason why I will have longevity. You know the problem with a lot of us? We are, if you say him, it's not true. The English word for if you say him is what? <laughs> Looking faces. <laughs> You can tell people that how many people will want to pray with me for tonight. Hey, man of God. They will go home and they will say, in the morning, they will still say they prayed. How many of you will help me carry this chair? After service, people lift out their hands. When they close church, the person is gone. The funny thing, if you had not lifted up your hand, it is most likely somebody else would have supported. Someone did not support because he assumed you would have done it. Now, this is not only for church. This is for life. Jesus would say in, don't take advantage of it, let your ye be ye and your nay be nay. Don't keep people hanging. Oh, please, some of some some are pranks in school. Pranks are different. We play pranks school. I don't know if you know that sometimes we joke. Yeah, so that I'm not being. But but what I'm trying to say is that you must have integrity, where your word is your word. How many of you keep your word? How many of you give a word, but as you go, it depends. That is where the problem is. You know something? You know, currently in Ghana, no politician is trusted. <laughs> is it true? It's not true. No politician is trusted. Actually, the whole system is not trusted. This is where it becomes dangerous because anarchy can come in at any time. The whole system cannot be trusted. Because you never know when it is left and when it is right. One thing somebody will do and fail, one thing the person will do and go scot-free. 
Or is it true or is it not true? Am I preaching here? So let's move on. He who has a blameless life and do what is right, speaking the truth from a sincere heart. The next one. Who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends? Read it. Go. Everybody read it. You meet somebody two days, three days, you have spoiled everybody to the person. Even Peace FM will not do that. Uh, Peace FM, when the guy came to say that the lady shouldn't come, oh, they all came and said, no, no, we, we, we don't agree. We all don't agree. It's not our policy. Peace FM are changing. There are some people, if they hear your matter, it's better you go and stand and do live Facebook. <laughs> oh, it's not true. Because have you heard a story about some pastors who met to confess their sins? One said he has been sleeping with members. One said he has been stealing offering. Then as the last pastor, you to your own, he was crying. Say said, why? I like talking. I can't wait to live here. <laughs> and tell the whole world <laughs> what you all have been doing. <laughs> Refuse to gossip or harm your neighbor. Is it that thing you are talking about? Does it build? Does it repair? Does it restore? Does it make things better? Ah, you hear me? Anybody who gives you information about people is carrying your own. They call them a tail bearer. Tail bearers always carry tails. I was so happy when we said, I think I showed it to Barbara. Take your seat. When a lady who worked for me years ago left, Tabita, went on Facebook and wrote about me. And what she wrote, I cried. Not negatively, so positive. And if you have seen it, I look for it and share it. If everybody everybody that has worked with you is evil. It means that you too are the next evil person coming. You didn't hear me. Oh, it's not true. An angry countenance drives away a backbiting tongue. The only way to drive away people who are tail bearers is when you are talking, frown your face like the weather forecast says it's going to rain. And such people cannot, they don't have righteousness. Now, to God you are righteous, but man will not relate with you well. Every gossip is delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every tale bearer is delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. So all the good things that you see at work, at home, in church, you, don't, you can't talk about it. Does the person know your landlord? What? I mean, so... They fought so. I used to come and say, I have something. I was about bombier. They will bore you. As they are boring you, they will take your own and bore somebody. 
Oh, why are you so quiet? I, is, is it okay? Let me hurry up. Look, at, I refuse to speak evil of my friends. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Now, you've gone to ask God for forgiveness, right? But that friend doesn't know that you have integrity. One day, my late friend, Apostle Vento, somebody came to tell me something about him. As I was talking, I picked my phone and I called. I said, Apostle, there's somebody here. He says you do cocaine. I said, ah. Nah. I said, I didn't say tell him. I said, he's on the line. Talk to him. <laughs> and he said, ah, is it this one? Where's your church? Said, oh, no, no, I'm talking about the one here. It's not you. All of a sudden, your mouth has changed. But you were have, you have blacklisting this person to me. I said I want to have his number. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, can I tell you the truth? Men now gossip than women. Men used to sit at a bar to talk business, when did they sit to discuss people. The next one, verse four. Those who despise flagrant sinners. You know what I fly? People who sin and they are proud. You know where other? Where my man at here? I'm going to call this guy. See the way he will take his phone and say, please, please, please. Wait. He's owing me. I'm going to call him and see how you beg me. People, listen, people talk about your past. And they don't say it with a lot of regret. They talk about it with a lot of pride. They're so proud. Hi, you. Integrity. So if you're marking yourself every point, two points. So far, righteousness better here. They honor faithful followers of the Lord. When you see people who are faithful for God, you honor them. Some people only say, into, so Sunday you were in church. You went the first. Second. Miracle service. Yeah, you crank go back up. Wednesday is Waba. Yeah, me and Fremo. All right. <laughs> he's not saying anything to you, but when he leaves, he has confused you. It's not true. Hey! Ophelia, are you here? Don't go. He has confused you. They see people who are following God. They made them fall. They say things to boo their beam. Let's go on. They keep their promises even when it hurts. Can I ask you a question? Do I keep my promise? Oh, no, no, no. Do I keep my promise? Oh, I don't. Oh, let's do it. Do I keep my promise? I do it when it even hurts. It hurts. I've missed, I've missed an appointment, big appointment, national appointment, several times. Because I have an appointment with some small boys and small girl in church. And I said, meet me at three. And some big man wanted to meet me around that same time. I didn't have an appointment. I said, please, I'm sorry. 
this afternoon, this morning like this, a group of people, I've given them tomorrow, they should come and see me from U.S. I had an appointment this afternoon, which appointment was that I decided to pray. And when I was, just when I entered the prayer mood, the call came, so I picked, said, yeah, and yeah, I said, I'm sorry. I said, Daddy, is somebody with you? I said, yes. But they said, you just entered. I just called. I said, yes. Tomorrow morning. Why? I have booked an appointment with the Lord. And I needed to keep it. Many of us give our word. And our word is not our bond. We send a sign a check to a lawyer. That's the first time doing work with this lawyer. The check was huge. The check did not go through because he took it to Ghana Commercial Bank and their system is backdated. So he called another person and said, this pastor is fake. The guy said, another lawyer said, never! Whenever you have this check, it will go through. It's your bank. No, 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 no! No! It can't. It can't fail. So they called me and I called my HR. And they called the bank, and the bank agreed. And I said they should call him. He got on conference. Then the lawyer later called me and said, hey, the people who have defended you, I'm even surprised. This is my first time working with you, but the kind of defense you had, you were a good man of God. Wait a minute. What if I've been doing it? <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'm genuine. I tell you about this, that the day, the way you prank, the way you prank, the day you are serious, nobody will mind you. There's a lion there. There's a lion there. One day there will be a real lion. <laughs> Please, I'm talking, I'm talking about Every day you are sick. You don't go to, every day you are sick. Tomorrow your abdomen, tomorrow your head, tomorrow your head. The, the, truth, the day you are really sick and you apply, they won't give it to you. You are, you are really sick. They won't give, and you will die. Because you don't keep your word. You are quiet. Quiet, quiet, quietness. You keep your word. I have people who come and say, the Lord says I should come and serve you. When they realize that there's only hunger in the office, the Lord has changed his mind. God has changed his mind. Oh, amen. amen. The next one. Those who lend money without charging interest. That's my bow. Do you know that biblically, if you lend money to somebody who is your fellow brother, the Muslims still do it. Don't take interest. You only take interest from unbeliever. If you are fellow brothers, you don't take interest. Am I teaching you? Your fellow brother, you don't take interest. And actually, fellow brother, me, my root, can you, can you listen to me? Don't borrow fellow brother money, they won't pay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when fellow brother comes and says, this 10,000 can I see this loan, give, help the person. Give the one that if he doesn't pay, it won't harm you. If 200 cities will not harm you, give 200. Say, God bless you. Let's pray for you. Because fellow brother will not pay. And if you try, you go to police station and you will look at you and say, you call yourself a Christian. <laughs> I didn't hear you. <laughs> so, are you here with me? Yeah. So, don't borrow me. I don't borrow money. If I give you money, it means I won't collect it back. If you bring it, I'll take it. But I will never ask you because there's no way I'll borrow money from you and you can come and ask me. And there's no way you two, you, you borrow. It is trouble. 
there's, there's a guy I'm waiting for him. If I get him, I'll prophesy on him. He charged me for doing some work for me. So me, I'll me, if he comes, come, I have a prophecy for you. <laughs> God. And every one thousand Ghana. I'm just teasing, it's not true. And who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent? They cannot bribe you to lie. Some, some of all they need is fried rice. Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. Bone straight. All they need is something to give you and then you are easy to go. You have been bribed. Ah, are you going to church? Oh, church, church, church. Oh, you are going to church. Oh, you are going to church. Oh, you are going to church. You know that since I became born again, I've not gone there. Hey, so can't you wait for no? We are going to do. It's true. One day, great family's church be hot. Two Zafi has been used to bribe you. He said, "If you do such things, such people will hold, will stand firm forever. Such people have." Integrity. Is there any more? Look as though you need to have your own integrity. I didn't hear you. Because you need to have your own righteousness. Amen. You need to have your own word. So uh, how many ingredients have I given to you that you need to build around you to have your own righteousness? Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, you mind me. If you don't remember, it means that you don't have it. Close your eyes with me. I want you to pray a simple prayer that, Lord, I want Isaiah 61, 2 to work for me. Give me that scripture. I want my righteousness to go before me. 1 and 2, Isaiah 60. Is it 61, 62, sorry. I want... I cannot remain silent. I will not stop praying for her until her righteousness shines like the dawn. I want my righteousness to shine like the dawn and my salvation blaze like a burning torch. Because I want the nations to see my righteousness. I want somebody to stand somewhere and say, this lady is not like that. This guy, I can put my life on the line. He's not like that. It's not like that. Sometimes when God opened my eyes to see things, I'm like, God, why? Taylor, seamstress, the four by Jua Tarea Chanopa, the dunya to shop. A to shop. Sinyami mini customers. You don't have righteousness. You 
you know very well the cream you are using for the lady's hair is fake. You know. So that bonnet team now is hundred dollars. Talk to God that I want my righteousness to go before you. Like Jacob. I want to have value. I didn't say sleep. to listen to this message again and again and again and again and again and again. Your righteousness must speak for you. Your righteousness will bring you favor. How do people perceive you? How do people think of you? What is the understanding of people about you? It's very, very important. Sometimes when everybody sees you like you are a womanizer or you are this, it could close doors. Meanwhile, what they are saying is not true. done I entered somebody's website and what I saw was very funny integrity father we thank you for this evening we want to hit the nations we want world leaders to submit to us. Let our righteousness go before us. And let the glory of the Lord be our royal guide. So that when we call, you will answer. When you cry, you say, here I am. As you have clothed us in your righteousness, let this righteousness begin to burn. Begin to lighten up our lives so the world will see it. And when the world sees it, we we'll vow to give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can you lift up your offering, your tithe, your first fruit?